after discussing ontology, now it's time to discuss epistemology. And again, we are, we are talking about an elephant. And this elephant is about the question, what is knowledge and how do we actually gain knowledge? So if there's a reality out there, as we would discuss in ontology, we now pose the second question. And the second question is, how can we understand reality? Or can we understand reality? Or do we need to measure reality? And usually in textbooks, there's a distinction made between either a positive view or a more interpretivist view. And this is one way of putting it. The core of it, at least, is that we can apply natural science methods to social sciences. And it starts with a pretty empiricist point of view, which means all the knowledge we, we gain, we gain it through the senses. So everything should be observable and measurable. A second element of positivism is that it's usually deductivist, which means that we are testing theories. And I will explain a bit about that later. But some would say that positivism also means inductivist. So it's focused on theory building. And there are different strands of positivism. Logical positivism was mainly focusing on theory building inductively, whereas hypothetical deductivist, neo-positivist, are focusing much more on deductivism. A fourth element of positivism is the focus on objectivity, or at least a value-free researcher. As a researcher, you do not try to pose your subjective view of the world. No, you try to establish an objective view of the world. And then lastly, but related, is that there is a huge distinction between scientific and normative statements. So as scientists, we try to do scientific statements rather than normative statements. Positivism in qualitative research is quite often used not only as a label to um, apply to these elements of positivism, but it's very often used as some terrible nickname. Actually, you can curse someone saying, oh, that's quite positivist. And people wouldn't like that. No one calls him or herself a positivist in qualitative research. So it has quite a negative connotation. Now, the other view on epistemology is interpretivist epistemology. And when people discuss this interpretivist epistemology, usually people would quote Schutz saying something about people are not atoms nor are people billiard balls. So when I hit you, you wouldn't react like a billiard ball. No, you would use your meaning. And this is what Schutz says. Social reality has a specific meaning and relevance structure for, for the beings living, acting, and thinking within it. So if I push you, you will act different from other people. And why? Well, because the meaning you give to that little push is different. And every time I push you, and when I push you smilingly or very angry, there's a huge difference in it. People interpret the world out there. They're not atoms, they're not billiard balls. In an interpretivist epistemology, the focus lies with the meaning of social action. It lies with Verstehen, in Weber's words, trying to understand subjectively. And that's also the last point, the actor's perspective a subjective reality. An interpretivist tries to see the world from the eyes of the researched or the people under study. This is a nice dichotomy, but as you can see, way too simple. Because in practice, in science, we use different dimensions. We use positivism versus interpretivism, uh, interpretivism as a shortcut. But if we just create some more dimensions, we can see one dimension of objectivity versus subjectivity. Or some would say, as objectivity in itself is a goal rather than something we can accomplish, intersubjectivity versus subjectivity. Now that's 
one way of looking at knowledge. How do we get a knowledge? Objectively, intersubjectively, or subjectively. How do we gain knowledge? Well, through verstehen, understanding from within, trying to get a subjective reality, trying to get into the meaning people attach to different actions, or through explanation. A leads to B, and B leads to C, something like that. So causality, and what is the cause of what? And we can see a dimension here. Different views on how do we gain knowledge. A third dimension can be this dimension. How do we get a knowledge? Well, by verification. Every time we see a white swan, we would say, there's another white swan. It helps us creating the theory that all swans are white. And in falsification, we try to test that theory. Now the fourth dimension, and now you see that this image, this graph, becomes impossible. The fourth dimension is empirical, a focus on the senses, focus on observing empirically versus rational or the idea that we have to sit down and ponder and wonder about social reality and we have to theorize rather than observe. Now, as you can see, this is an impossible graph. And this is just another simplification again, because we can add more dimensions, more ways of knowing. And every research is somewhere in between. In every re research, Verstehen is taking place, as well as explanation is taking place. So we cannot put positivism in either one of these corners. We cannot put interpretivism in either one of these corners. It's way too complex because every positivist does a little verification and a little falsification, probably. And there's quite some positivist research on subjective meaning. And every researcher doing empirical research, whether positivist or interpretivist, is somewhere in, in this corner. So, again, this is a simplification, but at least it's way more complex than using this very simple dichotomy. Now, falsification. If we see one white swan, we would say, okay, this is one white swan. If we see another white swan, we would say, okay, maybe all swans are white. And then if you've seen several white swans, you can say, well, every swan is white. Now, that is verification. And then falsification is, not looking the other way when a black swan moves in. Because in falsification, the idea of Popper and others was that in science, you try to test a theory. So you say all swans are white, and as soon as a black swan swims in, we would ring the bells of victory because our theory is refuted. This is one, just one dimension of epistemology. How do we get a knowledge? Well, probably through falsification, but probably also in many other ways.